Good afternoon, Tony Dottino, a founder of the USA Memory Championship and the president of Dottino Consulting Group, where I'm continuing to integrate the work I do in our brain research and the elements of brain health with what we're working to achieve in hosting the USA Memory Championship. And uh, in our world of COVID today, it just is a ongoing challenge to figure out how do we get people on Zooms or webinars or internet uh, virtual and maintain the integrity of our event as well as uh, and making it fun, making it where people enjoy it. So how do we get those together? And last year we did do the Lumosity uh, activities and they had their games and they could automatically score. And now our challenge is how do we bring some of the traditional games uh, into play and have uh, the application and or software that allows us to uh, have people participate and then score it so it becomes real time. And we're kicking around, first of all, how, where do we need to modify our existing events? So when I talk about that, we have names and faces. We have 120 pi pictures of people. Well, there's an app that will allow us to do 50, and, but we'll, it'll be timed. It'll be like a minute, and you get to do it several different times. Uh, we're looking at an app with all words, right? We now give out a couple hundred words, and we give people 15 minutes. Well, how do we shorten that and give people a minute to remember as many words as they can? Uh, the one that's uh, mind-boggling is the deck of cards. Okay, give people X number of cards and less than a minute to remember as many cards as they can. Uh, how about numbers? You know, strings of numbers. So we're, we're, we're bouncing around what we call our traditional events and how can we facilitate those events and integrate them with Lumosity and what their events are that they've already got established and make it a fun competition that has a level of people interested in, gee, how is this going, so how does this work? And have, so have, have people be able to see it, but most importantly, get the benefits of seeing people that are part of an event that demonstrates the unlimited power we have of the human brain. And so my whole vision for the USA Memory Championship and my life's goals are to show people that worry about losing their memory or getting cognitive impairment or having Alzheimer's and or dementia, to show people there are so many things we can do with our brain that we never ever thought possible. And the science continues to evolve that arena and it continues to help us get better and better. So yesterday, I'm not going to spend more time on this uh, today, but yesterday I showed uh, you know, how Tom stays young and fit. It's Tom Brady and how does Tom Brady stay fit and young? That was yesterday's broadcast, so I'll go back to that if you want to learn more about it. But one of them is how does he um, maintain mental focus? How does he maintain uh, the ability to take three seconds and figure out who to throw a pass to. And so he does brain uh, exercises. So who would stop and think of a quarterback or a football player stepping back outside his world of throwing footballs or catching them and think about, I need to do some brain training to help me enhance my ability of what my mental set would be and how I can fit that into being a, an elite quarterback. And I, I, you read this, this article that came out and what he mixes into it, and uh, it's fantastic. Then you come along, and I was reading something from Dr. Sanjay Gupta. And it's an exercise your brain, and you can accomplish this by reading books or taking outside interests, going to painting, cooking, uh, uh, learning how your memory works. So I call that one of our mental challenges that we have, which is, again, back to the USA Memory Championship. How do we get people interested? And they don't have to be mental athletes competing in the event, but they have to take away the message, the messaging of, I was able to observe a group of people who many never thought that they had good memories, 
but yet were able to demonstrate that they, in fact, improved their memory from when they started practicing and learning the techniques to where they are and being willing to say, let me just see how I stack up against a group of other people. And so it's really not all about who wins the event, it's really about who participates in the event. So our challenge in the COVID world today is how do you maintain the integrity of the event? How do you still get people to, to go through the practicing of it so that anyone can participate in it? It doesn't need to be for an elite group of nerds or mental athletes that just do practicing of memory skills, but that anyone can learn how to remember names. Anyone can remember how to put a string of numbers together. Anyone can learn how to improve the order of the sequencing of a deck of cards. And what's always interesting is people like get the names and faces. They can usually understand a bit about the numbers. But when you put the deck of cards in front of them, their first take is, well, why, what's this going to help me with? Well, when you study the history of cards and what they really were and what it was trying to accomplish in the early days of life, uh, it was, they were symbols to help people in uh, electric positions, electoral positions and government officials that be able to remember the things they wanted to talk about and the people that they wanted to talk uh, about. So it, it, it's got a history that really matches things we've done with schools. We've taught kids in history and English and science classes how to use cards to remember their history lessons or how to remember their science lessons or how to remember for narration or in fact how it might help them in, in their debating uh, competitions that they do with other schools on on uh, re relevant issues and things. So what our skill has been and what we've developed over the 20 plus years of hosting the Memory Championship is how do you take the events that we give and provide and how do we bring those into people's lives where they can see additional applications of them and they can see the pragmatism, uh, the pragmatic application of them that help them to be better people. And so in our uh, preliminary events, we try to take the elements of names and faces because that becomes a key part of our championship event where we introduce six people and they have to give their names. So the first thing you've got to do in the championship event is remember the people's names. So in our qualifying, we want to know that the people that advance to the finals know how to do names and faces. We do uh, numbers, okay, well, in the final events, right, there's telephone numbers, there's zip codes, there's addresses. So we want, in the qualifying events, we want to know that people in the qualifying that may advance to the final have had some practice in remembering strings of numbers. And so there's an event in the qualifying event that we do that has numbers to it. So why is that relevant? Because we want them to demonstrate those skills when they're in the Tea Party event that we do in the finals. Then we have uh, our, uh, our deck of cards, right? Okay, so we, in the qualifying events, we usually provide a deck of cards in five minutes and we then score that. Well, in our finals, we, the final event of the championship is two decks of cards with three people going head to head. And that's intense and that's exciting and it's a fabulous event. And uh, uh, we have, fun. it's a fun event and people want to know how does anybody remember the order of a deck of cards? So between the tea party and the deck of cards, they're both excellent events uh, that people have been interested in and wanting to learn more about how do these men and women that compete in this memory championship, how do they do this? And what we've been able to do now with Michael Dottino joining the team after almost 20 years and the Disney company uh, is put together a Maximum Memory Mastery online course. And he's taken the nuggets of 22 years of what we've learned from the, how do you teach people these things and what are the skills that you can share with them so that if they wanted to take this and put this into their own learning schedule and at this time do what? Mental challenges, as Dr. Gupta tells us, and as Tom Brady tells us about working your brain, 
we've given them now an opportunity to learn from this online course at their own pace and with a guarantee that within 30 days they can get a refund if they don't think this is getting it done for them. So we've tried to make this as user-friendly and as uh, positive within the spirit of anyone can learn how to improve their memories, given the desire to do so. And then they have a USA Memory Championship that we're working to make it fun and basic for people to participate in it so that they can just have a benchmark of how they're doing. And if we can pull all that together, I think our 2021 COVID uh, year is, still, is going to still allow us to do something worthwhile and uh, have people collaborate with us that are equally excited about it. And the most important thing is making a difference in people's lives. And so we continue to work. We're working at this. We're hoping to have our qualifying events somewhere in the June, July time period and our championship events somewhere in the September, October time period. Who knows where we're going to be with COVID by the time we get to September, October. So we're going to play this on both legs. We're going to play it on what would we do in the championship on virtual and what would we do in the event we would be able to get it yeah, online. So those are the things that uh, we're currently engaged in and very few people that ever participate in this really recognize or understand the amount of work that goes behind the scenes to pull off a really fantastic event with a lot of fun education, uh, people that speak about it. Uh, but the work it doesn't just happen the week before the event is actually happening. It takes weeks of practice and planning and agreeing and getting feedback. And so we're in that process right now. And if any of my Live with Tony audience has got any suggestions for 2021, please send me an email at adottino at aol.com. That's adottino at aol.com. And or take a peek at the Maximum Memory Mastery uh, online course and see if it's something you might want to give a go at and uh, uh, talk to me about it. And let's see if we can help you be a better person in how we revise your memories and begin to do things that are healthy for you and having a really fantastic life. Till Friday, have a good one. I did this earlier because my four to six schedule is uh, a little crazy today so i wanted to make sure i got my life with tony in and since the videos are stored uh we can go you can go pull this one off the video files and uh, i wanted to make sure i stay true to one monday wednesday and friday live with tony's